You're listening to Company Men. I'm Chuck Tomervik. I'm Jared Carter. And we're Ding Dongs. And if we can make barbecue sauce, so can you. So good. Are you ready? I'm ready. Sweet. Hey, Jared, you you brought me something. I sure did. What is that? This is a beer that I had this week for the first time. I really enjoyed it. I'm a big fan of Ballast Points yeah. Sculpin, and this is Ballast Points unfiltered sculpin have you had an unfiltered beer that I, wasn't homebrew yeah so i i'm familiar with stuff floating around in my beers uh yeah. i do like like a belgian style which you usually get a bunch of floaty nonsense in there mm-hmm. yeah it's known for its exceptional mouth feel <laughs> yeah that <laughs> mouth let me say that again mouth feel feel free to not say that again oh, all right Thanks. Um, I brought you something too. I'm actually super stoked about this. Uh, I brought you the organic chocolate stout from Samuel Smith's Brewery. Yeah. Um, have you had Samuel Smith's before? I have had Samuel okay. Smith's. I have been obsessed with Samuel Smith's the last few weeks. I brought this for two reasons. One is that I just am all about Samuel Smith's right now. Two is that I feel like you are a little like trained like honed in on ipas in general it is so true i'm trying to broaden your horizons this beer which Uh i'm cracking right now is blacker than sin i love the color of this let me just let's watch that for this for you oh my goodness this is such a gorgeous freaking beer that looks like what happens when you mix chocolate syrup into a soda so I'm going to yeah, hand let me you see that. that bottle. I'm going to just give you this here. Yeah. Careful. All right. And then uh, I'm going to pour your unfiltered oh, sculpin. That smells so good. Oh. oh, gosh. It smells good. Look at how dirty that is. <laughs> I love how nasty that looks. Oh, it's so murky. That's a nasty beer. It's so murky. Do you do this move? Oh, oh yeah. we're going to make a mess. No, 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 no. Oh, look at you. Just like that they head do. just resting right on top. That's some skills. Real nice. Oh. Okay. Nice. Why don't you 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 taste yours first? Let's cheers. Cheers. All right. What you think? Hmm. Do you know the first thing I think is just how nice that mouthfeel is. <laughs> it's exceptional. <laughs> exceptional mouthfeel. And also the mustache feel. I've got a lot of foam on the mustache. Yeah. Uh, welcome to a segment we like to call Beer Idiot, everybody. Uh, for those faithful listeners, you know we love the website beeradvocate.com. Love it. We are not those guys. We're not. No, I can't speak eloquently about much of anything, particularly not beer. But I can tell you what I think, which is that this is super freaking tasty. I really like this. Good. I'm glad I brought you something that you like. I'm going to try the uh, how do you like organic that? chocolate... Organic chocolate stout mm-hmm. from Samuel Smith. Here we go. I want to stop right there uh, and just say just the foam itself mm-hmm. is delicious it's and is so, so full of chocolate. It's like a... The head well, is just... You, mm, mm-hmm. 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 Let me taste it. Oh, that is so tasty. <laughs> that would be great with like a steak mm-hmm. or just served with vanilla ice cream i love it after for dinner i love this beer all of samuel smith stuff really they do a lot of um stouts and porters and their yeah. stuff is aged in wood and it is so it's such a nice finisher to a meal i think all right let's hear your beer idiot review this beer this uh skull pin uh, the uh it's it's it looks Real nasty and dirty. Tastes real nice. All right. This organic chocolate stout, it tastes like chocolate. Ooh. If I were to compare it to anything, I'd compare it to a chocolate bar. That is that is deep. I go deep 
or I go <laughs> or I go home. Nice. This is delicious. Good job. <laughs> All right. These are going to help a lot. Well, Chuck, something that we like to do here mm-hmm. uh, in in an effort to help people have folks into their home is we set up some scenarios that, as we both know. Hold on. Hold yeah. on. Hold on. Yeah. Because these are not, you've made it very clear that these are not scenarios, which would be a normal word. That's the kind of thing that you would just say to someone. Here's a scenario. No. No. Nope. We're dealing, what are we dealing with? Uh, If you're going to make me say it, I'm going to say it proudly. We are talking about some scenario. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Scenario. Oh, no. When when things go wrong. Neat name. I think it's a neat (laughs) name. I think it's a neat name. All right, hit me with hit me with a scenario. No. All right, Chuck. Here is your scenario. No. And this one's actually based out of a, a real life story. Oh yeah. I love to cook for my friends mm-hmm. for their birthday, and usually when I have somebody over, uh, especially for a special occasion like this where I'm really trying to just serve them and love them, and make them feel really good. Mm-hmm. I like to plate the food. Well, in this. A particular case, I went to cut the meat, mm-hmm. and I sliced my hand. I didn't realize the extent to which I had oh. sliced my hand, and I bled over all four plates. Now, the person that I was cooking for could see that I had already pulled out the plates. I considered rinsing them, which I thought just conveys to my guests, like, hey, this is dirty, <laughs> uh, dirty dishes that I'm just giving a quick rinse. So... In my case, I proceeded to take a paper towel and just wipe off the blood as best I could. Mm. Plated those things up real pretty. We had a delicious meal. Uh, mm. So, Chuck, you you bleed all over the cutlery. I'm and in the, the scenario. And, oh, no, yeah, now. In the, in the dishes. And somebody's watching. What do you do? Oh, okay. So, so they've seen me get all sliced up. They haven't seen you get sliced. They just see that you pulled out the plates. Okay. So I'm in the other room. I'm getting the plates ready. I've got my guests. There's small talk. Kids are probably running around. That's just how it goes down at my house. I give myself a real good slice. I make a big mess. But now I have a choice Mm -hmm. of whether to disclose this information or try and cover it up. Exactly. Oh, man. I don't think I'm going to play this one off. Here's the thing is that I'm a baby. Uh I'm just a big, big baby. (laughs) And <laughs> this happens to me. Yeah. If I give myself a, a slice like this, uh-huh. I'm not going to be able to just like, I'm going to play it cool. Yeah. Uh, I'm just a cool cucumber here just getting your plates ready. Uh, no, I'm going to make a bunch of noise about that. Uh, that's, that's you don't like gonna, you don't like to see yourself bleed is that I don't like to case? see myself bleed okay. I don't like to see the inside of any of my parts I don't <laughs> like to I yeah. don't like any of that to happen is dinner over it's point? not over but it's gonna stop for a sec <laughs> we're gonna hit pause we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna like deal with the situation yeah. that I've created first I like that yeah so I'm probably going to put someone else in charge of doing the rest of the cutting mm-hmm. while I go put myself in charge of stopping bleeding. Okay. Uh, and, <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to make a big, big fuss when I come out. Um, I'm going to complain about how uh-huh. much it hurts. And then when people try and give me sympathy, I'm going to say, no, 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 never mind. It's not, right. it's not that big a deal. Uh, and then we're going to have a nice meal on some different plates. Like, because I own enough plates. Yeah. I own enough plates to not eat off of ones that I just bled uh, on. Uh, yeah, I, I hear you. Okay, I think I, I think I made <laughs> honestly. I think I made this too easy for you. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm going to make it harder. You and I are this is... both a fan in different forms, somewhat of slow cooking. Uh huh. So let's say that you slow cook a delicious pork butt. Uh huh. When you go to cut, the blood doesn't get on the plates. It uh-huh. covers. It covers this pork. You've been working on it since you woke up at 5 a.m. this morning. You've been outside nursing this thing all day. Do you do you clean that up and serve it to your guests? Okay, so first off, the first thing that I do is I don't do that. (laughs) I throw whatever I need to between whatever blood spurt and and this. But no, it gets on the thing. It gets so on the for this scenario, no. Oh, this isn't a scenario, no. This is a scenario. Ooh. No. Oh. Uh, um, Stupid. Uh, 
stupid. That's uh, I boy. If it's just me, yeah. If I've just prepared this delicious, incredible thing for me and for my family, I'm gonna clean it up again. They already know this has happened because mm-hmm. uh, I'm a big, big baby. Yep, and I think I've got to. I've got to, I've got to leave it up to the guests. Oh, yeah, that's good. Hey, friend o' mine, uh-huh. I just spilled my blood all over your dinner, <laughs> and I'm pretty confident I can clean it up, but I want you to feel confident that you're not eating my blood. You know, it's a real uh, nice way you don't have I to do that. I can absolutely order pizza or whatever. I like that. And put this in the fridge and, and eat it later. But can't you just say... I put my blood, sweat, and tears into this. You can just this. disclose it secretly. Yeah. 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 I put my blood, sweat, and tears you into this. Hope you enjoy it. it. In order to make that true, you got to sweat on it a little bit. Uh, you got to cry some, which you'd probably already be I'm doing. I'm definitely crying. Yep. I'm definitely sweating. I'm defi- <laughs> definitely bleeding. bleeding yep. Uh, that's true. You could absolutely just fool your guests. You could give them yeah. a, that trick, the old trick. I feel like nobody's going to eat at my house anymore. <laughs> Now that they know that story. This is ensuring. Yeah. Uh, Those were some close friends. I feel like, and I've I've, I've since disclosed this information to them. They took it like champs. Yeah. They were fine. You have some uh, strong-willed friends. All right. Hit me, baby. I'm going to give you that that scenario. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. You have uh, have gone all out on this party. Yeah. A special occasion. You have a bunch of people over. Mm -hmm. And everyone's had a real good time. You've cooked up a bunch of food. Everybody's feeling pretty good. Um, You've had good food. You've had good drink. Most people have left the party. Sure. And uh, it's winding down. You've moved outside. Mm -hmm. So it's just a handful of, you know, the the sort of folks who linger on. Kind of closer friends. Close friends, annoying people. People who don't get the hint to leave, right? Uh, And you hear... On your fence, just kind of a knocking. Okay. At first. Yeah. Uh, and this is, we're, we're probably talking around 10, 11 p.m. now, right? Sure. Whatever time, like, you're winding down. Yep. You hear first a knock and then a holler. Hey, 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 y'all, cooking a, cooking a cookout? Ooh. That's what you hear hollered. I'm so interested in who this might be. This is... Also, a true life story that happened to me. I want to know what you do. So you're interested in this person. You hear a holler, a knock, and then a holler. Hey, 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 hey y'all! Cooking a cookout mm-hmm. on your back fence at eleven o'clock at night. What do you do? Who's asking? Hey, oh, it's me. It's you. You guys cooking a cookout? Who's me? It, it's me, Rico. You don't know Rico. I don't know. I Rico. want to make this clear. You don't know Rico. Rico, I'm having a cookout. Uh, yep. What's up? What do you need? Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You guys just like, oh, I'm just hanging out here too. Here's what I want to get down to. Huh. Are you letting Rico in? That depends a lot. That. I probably would. Honestly, yeah. I probably would. Okay. So you've let Rico in. We're going to yep. continue. So you've opened the gate now, mm-hmm. right? Rico comes right on in. Okay. Uh, Rico's holding uh, Coors Light and smelling like a dozen Coors Lights. Yeah. And uh, he just starts talking. He's just hanging out. He he helps himself into the uh, the the hangout, the circle. Uh, yeah. Rico tells you a real cool story about his uh, his his main bitch, his motorcycle. Oh, okay. Yeah. And his bitch, his his wife. Uh, or girlfriend. Uh-huh. Um, so so he tells you this story, and 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 one of them doesn't like the other one. Uh, you could probably figure out which one sure. is which in there. Um, he tells you a, a story about uh, how he used to be the president of Pizza Hut. Yep. Um, and would go and just like they would fly him around to places to fire people. Okay. And I can't stress enough, this is a real life person. Yeah, it's that sounds, actually happens. This is very detailed. I and I want to know. So, what yeah. do you do in this oh. scenario? No, now he's there with your mom and your close yeah. friends. Okay. And, uh, and, and he's in your yard and look, just up, up in your, your space. Look, I love Rico. I have always loved Rico's mm-hmm. my whole life. These are just people that, for one reason or another, um, 
and if you've ever seen me, it doesn't make any sense, but these are people that I resonate with <laughs> yeah. and I get really close to. But for me, the big question is, who is my number one priority here? Mm -hmm. If I've invited people into my home, part of the commitment that I've made to them is I'm going to love you, I'm going to care for you, and I'm going to make you feel as comfortable as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. And if I feel like what Rico is doing is contributing to people at my party feeling uncomfortable, I'm going to go into the next phase, which is mm -hmm. feel things out with Rico in terms of uh, helping Rico to uninvite himself right? and see how open he is to that. And so Rico, hey, buddy, I got some friends over right now. I haven't seen them for a while or this is family. You know, my mom feels really uncomfortable around new people, whatever the case is. Try to do what I can to spare Rico's feelings yeah. and say, hey, you know, can we hang out at another time? Can we make this work? My experience. Oh, you with, can get some digits. Yeah. M my experience with people <laughs> like Rico is in a, in a case like that, he would probably be pretty open and understanding and would most likely step away from that. If I get the sense that he's not going to, I might call in professional help, which really is a bummer because it's yeah. going to put a whole thing on the evening. But take those guests who are most uncomfortable, lead them in the into the house, keep the guys who are who are big and tough, have them stand outside with me so we make sure Rico <laughs> doesn't like welcome himself into the dining room. Because you always invite your bouncer friends. Right, exactly. Dinner. Most of my friends are big and strong. <laughs> Some are not. Uh, and yeah, just kind of go from there and if, you know, wait, wait it out until somebody comes and puts him in the back of a car yeah. and takes him home because yeah. he obviously needs to be there tonight yeah. with his bike and his lady friend. Right. Right. Yeah. His no, that's a great scenario. That, that happened to you? That really, what did really, you? really happened. What did you do? On Thanksgiving. This mm -hmm. was Thanksgiving night. Uh, and I did pretty much that same, same thing. I, I actually had him come in the house to party. Everyone was outside. Yeah. Uh, I had him come in. I was trying to, you know, Hey man, if you need some food, like let's get you some sure. food. We, I cooked up just a crazy amount of turkey yeah. and other food. I love and that about he you. He wasn't, I, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he was not, he wasn't interested in food, just interested in hanging out for a minute. I hung yeah. out with them in the house for a few minutes. And, I bet he loved every minute. Uh, okay. And I just let him know, like we were winding down, we were ready to go. He was good. He's like, yeah, I'm going to hang out with my sister-in-law. And he left. I never, I have never seen Rico again. For the most part, guys like that, they, they can take a hint yeah. when given clearly enough. And yeah. That's really cool, though. I like the fact, because you, you, I think, are, are a lot like me in that respect, that we like strays. Yeah. And so uh, just the fact that you would invite that guy into your home says loads about you. Yeah. Which is really, really cool. It was a little bit of that, like, protective. Was, yeah. I wanted to separate. I figured it was probably easier sure. to, to, to do that move than mm -hmm. to move everybody else. Oh, yeah. I did want to think about my guests and, and my parents and, yeah. and just everybody <laughs> uh, who was there. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and yeah, I wanted to take care of the dude. If he wanted some food, I'm, I'll feed anybody who shows up. Chuck, By the way, you world listening, I'll feed anyone who shows up. Um, <laughs> and I don't want to go too far here, but I would be willing to bet that that was probably probably one of the best Thanksgivings that Rico has had in recent history. I don't know, man. He told me some stories about some pretty cool places he'd been, some pretty cool stuff he'd done. Well, I, he, he'd, ha he'd had some adventures. I've never had a Pizza Hut Thanksgiving. <laughs> I imagine that's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was it was a very interesting end to a very interesting night. He was right. a cool guy. Very cool. All right. Well, hopefully that helps you guys. Chuck, what are we talking about tonight? What's oh, our big topic? We're coming right up on the 4th of July. Right around One the corner. One of my favorite times to have folks over. Mm -hmm. I imagine the same for most people. Yep. We're talking about grilling. We're talking about having some real good food. We're talking about barbecue barbecue mm, which i just if there's anything that will will get me excited is talking about barbecue and getting some good food and today tonight wherever you are listening i want to equip you with some tools to do barbecue right right tonight we're talking about that sauce that sauce that, sauce oh, my. that goes on that barbecue and now listen you want to go down to the store, you want to pick up your favorite sauce, that is totally God fine. God bless you. Yeah, that is fine. totally fine because there are some phenomenal sauces out there. Yep. You want to take this up to the next level without even just like a crazy amount of effort. You can do this by getting down, getting your hands dirty, getting your own homemade sauce. Yep. 
really put that owl in it, get that Tim Allen in it. And we have, so we've prepared a number of sauces tonight. We're going to try these sauces. We're going to talk about kind of where these came from. Yep. And we're going to rate these and we're going to let you know the best way, the easiest way that you can kick up your 4th of July or whatever party with some real good sauce. Sounds like a plan. Yeah, I'm super excited to try your sauce. Yeah, Jared. I hope you like it. I'm super excited. I want to start there. Uh, if you sure. don't mind, yeah. we've got some uh, yummy little uh, meaty morsels here uh, for dipping. Tell me about your first sauce. All right. I wanted to do something different with this sauce. Mm-hmm. I wanted, this is this is one that I made. Okay, so I have two sauces here tonight. One mm-hmm. that I followed a recipe for, which is a really great sauce. Uh, but this one that I made, I I found the most, like a, a fairly basic recipe mm-hmm. from a pretty well-known source. I took a look at the ingredients. I cut out what I didn't think would work. I I increased some things. I decreased some ingredients. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to post all this on our show notes. You'll find yeah. them on our website, uh, companymenpodcast.com. But for this sauce, I wanted to do something that was fairly original and that also was kind of tied to where we live. Yeah. So I I did something. My mother-in-law, I love her. She brings me veggies all the time. She's a gardener, so yes. some of them are straight from her house. She goes to these food markets. Uh, she brought me a bunch of green chilies nice so i roasted these suckers up i i used the food saver i froze them a couple months ago and i've just been using them for different things i thought i want to make a barbecue sauce that utilizes some roasted green chilies i want to add a little sweetness so i'm also going to dice up some honey crisp apple mm-hmm. i want to toss in some three dollar gallon jug of brandy a couple <laughs> tablespoons of that yeah uh just to say that it's got brandy in it right so i sauteed up the apples and the green chili with some onions uh, got that nice and tender added the rest of the ingredients i'm a big fan of apple cider vinegar so mm-hmm. there's quite a bit of that in there i'm also a really big fan of lots of freshly ground black pepper so yep. you'll find uh, a little bit of that taste but yeah, and some other things. Like I said, I'll post the whole uh, ingredient list online, but give that a taste. Yeah, I'm so think. done listening to you and ready to taste this right now. <laughs> I hope it's as Here good go. as it sounds. Oh. Do those flavors work together? That is super neat. The first thing that I get is the sweetness. Mm-hmm. And that's a real bright, like real nice light sweetness. Yep. And then all that roastiness, right? It's what one of my favorite flavors is that when you when you get something, you get that little blackness around yep. that. So you're talking about them green chilies, mm-hmm. that roasty flavor, yeah, which just kind of sets with you. Like I've now finished my little meaty morsel, yep, all drenched in sauce, and this roastiness is still sitting with me. This is super nice. I I really like it because uh, we're eating. We grilled up some pork chops mm-hmm. before this. Just a little salt and pepper, olive oil, uh, super basic pork chop, right? But just the thought of pork chops and applesauce kind of come to mind. <laughs> like that sweetness with the pork yeah. works really well That's, together. Uh, well, this is the thing I'm thinking is like if you did some pulled pork, yeah. like some pulled pork sliders and threw that on there yeah. with some coleslaw, Ooh, that is that would be phenomenal. Good. I'm going yeah. back for another bite of that if, good. if I didn't have a whole bunch more sauces. We have to try. a lot more to try. We have a lot of sauces. Do you want me to do you want me to do my other one or let's, do you want to jump into yours? Let's, you, let's do let's, let's do, do my other one. Yeah. This other one I got from I want to get this right. I don't know where I put my book, but it's I Southern Living. Is that a magazine? That sounds like a magazine. If not, I apologize and all the correct <laughs> we information apologize will be on to our all website. All the people at not Southern Living. But this this particular it's in a mason jar. Uh, all of our barbecue well, of sauces are, which is pretty cool. Right. Uh, it's real cool. Yeah, it's real cool. It's real cool. It's real cool. Y'all. Real cool, man. This particular sauce is a vinegar-based sauce. If you're familiar at all, and a lot of guys out there who like to barbecue are, but this was a whole new concept to me uh, up until last year, was this is an Eastern North Carolina-style sauce. Mm-hmm. A lot of vinegar, a lot of red pepper flakes. 
a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of ketchup, but the, but the vinegar is really the star of the show. I want you to imagine trying this with with pulled pork. Yeah. Because I think these two would go really well I really together. dig Give it. That you've, a got, bit. you've got like, we're world traveling right now. We are. Or country traveling because you got, you got some from... Here in the Southwest, you get some from the East Coast. I really want to go to North Carolina because I really like this barbecue sauce. Oh, man. And there's a fried chicken place called Parker's Barbecue. I got one of their recipes and I really want to go there. So before I even taste this, the vinegar is coming at me. And oh, yeah. not in like a super caustic way, but this is nice. You're going to like it. Um, oh. Oh. Right? Oh, I dig that. Isn't that good? got a lot of hot sauce in it, a lot of tabasco yeah it's got a lot of red pepper flakes chili powder everything we're gonna post that on the website as well with a link to uh southern living i think it's southern living if not wherever you're gonna get it a is link. You're we're gonna, gonna link just follow the link this is so good yeah i like it because the vinegar is like that's the first thing i smelled but it's not like the peppers are the star of the show right in that like i'm really getting a lot of pepper in that that is super cool. What I like about this... I want to put that on some chicken wings is what, what I want to put that on. What I like about this recipe compared to other uh, others of the same style is it has more tomato, more ketchup than they normally do. Still, definitely, you're not mm-hmm. getting a whole lot of ketchup. Right. But it also has a little more sweetness than what I've had. It was sweet. Others. And yeah. it was like a natural sweetness. Not overbearing. Uh, I think a lot of it from the apple cider. It's a lot of apple cider vinegar in there too, yep. right? Yeah. Yep. Um, and I didn't, I didn't get very much tomato at all in that. Uh, but the, the vinegar and the pepper are, are real nice. In right. That. I really dig that a yeah. lot. That's cool. I'm glad you like it. Uh, I, I'm really excited because you're a very creative guy. Can wow. you tell me a little bit about the, okay. the barbecue sauces you made? So we, we decided to get down on some barbecue sauce. I have made barbecue sauce one time in my life prior yeah. to, uh, getting prepared for this. And it went uh, not very good. Yeah, uh, I tasted I, that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I decided to forego any kind of recipe, any kind of like uh, predominant wisdom, like start with ketchup. That's what I you said, like to do. That. <laughs> you I like, like to forego recipes. I do. I like to think that I know what I'm doing, but yep. I don't. No. Uh, and so this one other time that I've tried to make barbecue sauce didn't come out great. And so this time I decided, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to try and like sink into some of the, uh, you know, the predominant wisdom around how to make some barbecue sauce. I decided to seek out, uh, some counsel from someone I trusted. I decided to go to my girl, Rachel Ray, because I know that she gets down on some, on some real good sauce. So I looked up, we're going to link in the show notes to Rachel Ray's. Uh, she's got this barbecue sauce base and it's this incredible, like just really simple, just a handful of ingredients that you combine and you cook for a real short amount of time. Yep. And it makes this great base to then play with, to then like do your own thing. You yeah. can eat it just like that, but you can do whatever you want from there. And so I set out, I started with this base and it was pretty good. And then I set out my goal. I really wanted to encapsulate here where we live in the southwest i wanted to get real smoky with it okay yeah i wanted to see what i needed to do to get the the best just southwest smoky barbecue and so i did a little bit of experimentation a little bit of science uh i've got three different barbecue sauces here that i want you to try all right they they are all starting from the same base yeah but we have changed up a little bit how i cooked them and a couple of ingredients so the first one that i'm going to give you right here we're going to try this together is is my girl rachel's sauce and i cooked it just on the stove top this is the base just like the you normally recipe. would but i added mm. something an ingredient that i'm super super excited about and this is a whiskey that okay. is found here in the southwest it's it's made here in our hometown it's uh we'll put a link to it in the show notes because this whiskey is incredible it is uh smoked similarly to what you would find in a scotch but it's smoked over mesquite which mm-hmm. means it's got that real smoky yeah. southwest flavor and so i thought if we get some of that mesquite smoked whiskey in this house yep. that we're gonna get a really good flavor so let's just try that let's try it 
the smokiness in that sauce comes from the whiskey? The smokiness in that sauce. So in all the sauces, there's uh, smoked paprika. Okay. Which is something that's in Rachel Ray's ingredient list. And so that is sort of the base for some of that. But yep. most of what you're tasting is from that whiskey. That's amazing. Let me tell you why this tastes so good to me. That is a really good sauce. I like it better than both of mine. Um, that's That taste of mesquite. Mm -hmm. Growing up, my family grew up in the middle of the desert in Arizona, like uh, far away from civilization, when we would have big barbecues and invite people over, or if we'd go out further into the desert, (laughs) you know, to get even farther (laughs) away from anything that resembled uh, normal, we we would always grill on mesquite, and it's such a distinct flavor. It's such a wonderful smoky flavor. That sauce is really, really good. I like that. I, I'm probably going to take some of that home with me. Do you have more? I have more, and you can fight me for it later. We're just <laughs> getting started, though. So All right. that's where we started. We got that mesquite smoked whiskey, the Whiskey Del Bac, which, yeah. again, we're going to put some links to it in the show notes. Highly recommend it. But I feel like that's not enough. And so I wanted to get I wanted to get actual smoke in there and i know like a lot of people are like i want that smoky flavor you just put that liquid smoke in there right that's not for me that's not gonna do it i like liquid smoke i will use it for certain things but i wanted to find a way to get some actual smoke in this sauce i like where this is headed what'd you do so these next two sauces we're gonna start with this one i cooked this sauce on the grill threw it in an aluminum pan and cooked it on indirect heat with so on on one side of I've just got this gas this cheapo gas yeah. uh, grill only turned on one burner on one side put a, a pan of mesquite chips in there to just burn and smoke and fill that sucker up with smoke and cook this house <laughs> with the indirect heat <laughs> oh, and all I'm that excited. smoke living in there yes. for about two hours. Okay. And we're going to see how this comes out. Oh, just the, just the smell alone mm-hmm. is wonderful. Oh, that's really good. Really, really good. You can definitely taste the smoke. What's surprising for me is that I, I can taste even more smoke in the Whiskey yep. Del Bach. There's that much mesquite mm-hmm. flavor packed in that whiskey. Uh, but this is really really good yeah really good i dig this one because i feel like the peppers take more of like center stage sure so one of the things i did in all of these i i, I didn't mention but i took uh my girl rachel's recipe and and added you know and in the base of all of these a little bit of our my own flavor a little bit of the southwestern flavor i chopped up some ancho chilies yep. and some uh chipotle and put that what? just a little bit in there yeah and so i feel like the peppers really take center stage in yep. this one um uh, and there's a little bit of smokiness but the, this is like a really good peppery sauce. Oh, it's so good. What would that be good on? What What would that? I want to put this on like on a hamburger. Yeah. Or like a sausage. Oh, I love barbecue a sauce sausage on my hamburger. With some sauce. You ever talk to somebody who's never put barbecue sauce on a hamburger All before? the time. And I don't understand they look at where you they like... have lived. <laughs> they look at me like I, you're, you're at someone's crazy. barbecue. You go to someone's house yeah. and they're serving hamburgers and you say, hey, you got any barbecue sauce? And they, it's like you just asked yeah. them if they had a copy of the Constitution. It's like you're around. asking them if they would cut their hand and bleed all over <laughs> your meat. <laughs> I'm so amazed. For all of you listening out there, put some dang barbecue sauce on your hamburger. Oh, yeah. It's going to change yep. your life. Oh, gosh. So good with a little cheddar. Some, oh, ooh, smoked cheddar. All right. Jerry. Okay. I'm going to, I'm getting hungry. Tell me about this third sauce. I'm so excited about this I bet sauce. you got weird. What'd do, you do? You know, so we've got the smokiness from the whiskey, and that's nice. It's nice and smoky. It kind of comes together nice. We've got a little bit of that smokiness just from it hanging out on the grill with the smoke, kind of living with it for a couple hours. Sure. We're going to bring them together. <laughs> so this last one, mm. this cooked on the grill, indirect heat, about two hours, but we also added about two shots of that whiskey Del Bach to this mother. Um, get down on that. I think we have a winner. Uh huh. That is an excellent, excellent sauce. Oh my. 
as bad as the first attempt at making sauce I ever had was, mm-hmm. this is one of the best barbecue sauces I've ever eaten. I will just absolutely toot my horn, my own horn right here. This freaking sauce. <laughs> it's so good. It I've never so heard good. of anyone cooking a sauce indirectly on a grill. Um, I cannot recommend it enough. No. Both of these sauces got this really neat character. If you've got the time, I just did this after I put my kids to bed. I did some other stuff just while it kind of hung out sure. on the grill with the wood chips. Just added some more chips. Cannot recommend this enough for imparting that smoky flavor. And cannot recommend enough getting some whiskey down in your sauce. Can I let? Can I just say something about that? For anybody who's wondering, why would I go through all the trouble of making my own barbecue sauce? This is, for me, just a firm belief when it comes to having people over. Food with a story. Mm-hmm. Food with a story is delicious. It, it's so much better. You could find, I'm going to make an argument here. You could buy a sauce from the store that maybe in a blind taste test, mm-hmm. with no story attached to it whatsoever, somebody might say that store-bought sauce was better. But when you sit people down in your home and you say, I sat outside by the barbecue all night mm-hmm. cooking this sauce. <laughs> you like <laughs> and you that. say it like that. You say it just And you like talk that. to them about it and you tell them the story. Something in their brain just fires and goes, this is going to be amazing. And it delivers. It delivers. It makes yeah. the, it takes the flavor of the food and you're tasting the story. I don't want to sound ridiculous, but no. you're eating that story. People can tell when you're excited, right? People can tell when you invite them over and you're excited to have them over and you're excited to do this thing. People can taste when you're excited about the food. Absolutely. Could not agree more. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to put these recipes. Uh, I really dig Jared's uh, like creation here. I really dig this. Both of these recipes are going to be linked in the show notes. Try these out, you guys. Kick up your barbecue with these sauces. You're going to blow people away with not even that much effort. I promise you. A lot of these share ingredients as well. So I would really encourage everybody, make two or three Mm -hmm. sauces. People love the variety. Mm -hmm. People love to taste all three. Uh, It's going to take your barbecue. Should you choose to have one on the 4th of July, it's going to take it to a whole new level. Also, if you're going to go to somebody else's house, Oh, Instead of inviting people over, sauce. bring a, bring over two or three homemade barbecue sauces. They're going to love you forever. Ooh. They're going to invite you to everything. You so, want to be the best guest yeah. in the world. Bring some sauce to my house. Holy cow. Unless you yes. don't like the person whose house you're going to, don't bring the sauce because they're going to want you to come back. Yeah. And if you don't want that. Or just don't ever look at any recipe and try and think you know how to make a sauce all on your lonesome <laughs> with, with just no knowledge whatsoever. And and then bring that to their house because it's going to taste real bad. It wasn't horrible. It wasn't. It, no, but it, it was. It was okay. It was, yeah. It was, it was pretty bad. <laughs> All right, y'all. As you know, Company Men does not currently have a sponsor that exists, but that's not going to stop us from telling you about one of our favorite fake sponsors. Today's episode is brought to you by Dad Chairs. You know what I'm talking about, that big, lumpy, stained recliner that you would sit in until your dad would get home and yell at you for sitting in his chair. But at the end of the day, nothing beats kicking back for some forbidden relaxation. That's why the fine folks at Dad Chairs are bringing you the very best in artisan sitting experiences. Now you can get that same off-limits comfort you remember from your childhood. And I know what you're probably thinking. It's not going to have that same awful stink from someone sitting in it for 35 years. And that's where you'd be wrong. Dad Chairs employs a skilled team of dads who personally sit in the chairs and watch every single game of an entire Milwaukee Brewers season before shipping straight to your doorstep. Every stain is legit, every smell is authentic, and for a nominal subscription fee, Dad Chairs will even call you up at random times and have an actual dad yell at you to get out of his chair because they're all about that true dad chair experience. Right now, you can go to Dad Chairs' website, type in the promo code COMPANYMEN, and you'll get your first three months of reprimands absolutely free. You have nothing to lose except the sweet comfort of repressed memories. So go order one now. So I'm yet to find a single subject 
of which my dear friend Chuck here does not have an incredibly, I would say, undeservedly strong opinion well, that's not about. But by goodness, I'm going to keep on trying, Chuck. Bring it, baby. All right. Do you have any thoughts on white bread versus wheat bread? Ooh, I like this one. I'm curious where you think I'm going to go. Because I, I, I do have an opinion. If I had to guess, I would say, oh, oh I, I don't know where you're going to go with yeah, this one. I don't I, know. Yeah, surprise me. I do have an opinion. And it's, it's a little bit of a cop out. I really like both. I really like, if I'm getting down on a sandwich, right? If I've just got some bread and some stuff in between, that bread is super important. You've got to have good bread. Don't just throw any old kind of bread, get the cheapest bread. I mean, whatever. You don't have to spend that much more to get a nice bread. And a wheat bread gives you something a little bit more for your teeth to get into. It gives you something a little bit more for your taste buds to taste on. Sure. If you're just making a sandwich, use some dang wheat bread. Now, for a long time, I would have told you that white bread doesn't belong around, but lately I've been using bread to make a lot of things, to make some stuffing, to make, uh, to just kind of like thicken up like meatloaf and these kind of dishes and sure. wheat bread. I used wheat bread for a long time in these things. Wheat bread just does not cut it when it comes to this. You've got to use it. There's something about that sweeter, that fluffier, that just overall like just fills up your mouthiness sure. yep. of a white bread. You need, you are, you must use white bread if you're using it in some kind of recipe where you're using that bread to hold it together. You're trying to do some stuff and you're trying to do some, uh, you know, some meatloaf. Use some white bread. Don't give me none of this whole grain oat nonsense. White bread was born to make that kind of dish. Chuck, you know what's really interesting to me about you when you're when you're sharing your opinions? They're exactly they they come with the exact level of intensity <laughs> that I would expect from somebody five beers in at a bar. Oh yeah. And I'm only I'm only one beer and one whiskey. You're you're not even a whole I'm... beer in. <laughs> And the and you had like a teaspoon of whiskey before this, yeah. but this is just what you you bring to just about every conversation that we have. It's one of the things that I like about you. I would encourage everyone out there take a page out of Chuck's book. Yeah, have an opinion on some things. Start to feel strongly, y'all. You know, I, I maybe people will disagree with me on this, but when I have people over for dinner, I like when they care about things. Yep. I like when they've read up on something. I don't care. And and the cool thing is if somebody feels strongly enough about anything, <laughs> it's exciting. I don't normally care that much about white bread versus wheat bread, but were you over at my house for dinner right now? I think we could go into this for yeah. for a while. Because I'm right. And you know. No, 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 I'm no, right. you're not. Let me tell you why you're not. Okay. You, you're incredibly <laughs> wrong. Uh wheat bread is Wheat bread can be okay, and I might eat wheat bread because scientists have lied and told me that it's good for me, so I might do that every once in a while when I'm eating my pure sugar peanut butter and jelly sandwich. At least I'm going to eat it between two slices of wheat. I think it really takes away from a good sandwich. I think the mm. it just overpowers, and it tastes burnt. And it's gross. You're just buying bad bread. You try and you try. Let's just talk about I can't peanut butter. For no. the bread you're talking let's, about. No, what? let's just talk about peanut butter and jelly sure. for just a second. Because you got mush and mush between bread. Right? Yeah. Peanut butter is mush and jelly is mush. It's There's no form. There's no, like, there's nothing to bite into. You try and throw some white bread you try and bracket that mush with some white bread, you just got mush and mush between mush because that white bread doesn't give you anything to bite. Now, wheat bread, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. The taste, not the same, but just having that something that your tooth can find a, uh, no, your tooth can't find a foothold. Can your tooth find a foothold? <laughs> your tooth, for your yeah. tooth to foot, for your, you get that tooth foot hold <laughs> in, that's, why you use the wheat bread. It, the bread's not going to be the star of the show, right? You're but right. the bread's there to support. The bread is important. 
The bread is there to give you something to let the other things shine. And if you just got that white bread bracketing your your mush and mush, you're not you're you're doing yourself an injustice. Chuck, did you have a strong opinion about white bread versus wheat bread before tonight? I have always felt strongly about <laughs> this. You know that. Um, the hardest part of this conversation for me is I my dentist just told me that I have foot tooth. <laughs> I'm very. Oh, Thanks for I'm bringing sorry. that up. I'm sorry, buddy. I'm really. It's I've, that's very insensitive of me. All right, we've had we've had some we've had some laughs. We've had some sauce. We've had a tear or two about your horrible mouth malady. Uh, now I just want to break this down for the folks who are coming in and just ain't got the time to listen to us babble on about all the stuff that we just babbled on about. I want to break it down for him. And when I say break it down, I, I mean I want to break it down. Oh, it's time to break it down. Yep. It's time for the too long, didn't listen, rap. This, has, this, this should absolutely not belong in our podcast. This is the dumbest thing I've ever done. But it, it, it's here. Yep. And we own it. Here we go. All right, Are you check. ready? I'm going I'm to lay down that I wanna real exp- fat beat. I want to explain this on the front end. You're probably going to notice as you listen... I have I am rapping freestyle here. Yep. I have not practiced. I have not thought about this at all. Yep. I'm just going uh, head in. And you're Ch- probably you're probably going to notice that I've actually I've been beatboxing my entire life, and I've been doing this for a long, 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 long time. Uh, this is this is really what I'm best at. You're probably going to notice that too. So, right. Uh, are you ready? I'm ready. I'm gonna lay down that fat beat. Let's go. <laughs> Tonight we got together, who was the boss? I wanna tell you all about it, the boss is the sauce. We had some beers, some sculpin' and some stout. My life, I'm trying to figure it out. We had some grilled pork, it was yummy. I put that stuff inside of my tummy. We talked about bleeding on plates. If you have some people you don't love, some people you hate, then you can bleed on their plate. That's not what I did, I love the people that I bled on their plates. Yeah. Keep going. I got some socks, drink some whiskey, some whiskey Del Bach. I like your house that's on a block. Oh gosh, I think that's it. We're really good at this. We are really good we're at really this. Good this good is at really, this. really good. Forget the podcast, we're just doing this now. Next time, let's just do 40 minutes of this. All right. Uh, tune in next week, folks, for 40 minutes of the company men rap about all sorts of blocks and socks. It's the Dr. Seuss Rap Hour. We can't wait for you to join us next time. Okay, make sure and head to our website, companymenpodcast.com. <laughs> uh, we're all over social. Check us out on Facebook. You can check us out on Twitter, at Company Men Pod. We're also on, what else are we on? We're on Instagram. You hit us up, just search for it right there. I'll be honest with you, at the time of recording, I haven't made this account yet. But you're smart. You can figure this and, out. And we're probably going to have a link to it on our website. <laughs> we're I'm definitely going to have a link. We're going to have a link to all the sauces that we made tonight. We're going to have a link to all of the uh, yummy, yummy whiskey that we talked yep. about tonight. Mm-hmm. And uh, we want you to just have an awesome 4th of July. Get out there. Invite people over. Make them some sauce. And have a great time. We'll see you next week. And like we say every week, if you come over to my house and you take a look at my books... You're gonna find that I don't know how to read. I don't have any books. 